Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. So you might have seen this video already and uh, this is a re-upload. So Duke Nukem by default doesn't run VSA mode, it's actually in the menu if you look at the 2.0 it also says 1.0 which I should have seen. Also VSA like 1.2, there is 1.1, 1.2 also. Um, the lowest as I understand is uh, resolution that I understand is 640 by 480. The thing is with VSA 2.0 you can run 320 by 200 just like you can do without VSA in Duke Nukem and that's called the screen buffer mode. So that was actually what we're running on these cards when we ran what I called VSA 1.0. So I'm gonna basically have to redo part of this video and uh, because it's uh, I don't want a video to be updated that is uh, technically incorrect on uh, what I'm running. The, the end result is the same, so if we run uh, screen buffer mode on these cards, it's much slower than VSA. Also, we don't really want to run VSA 1.2 because that's requires 640 by 480 and that's just too many pixels to push, it's gonna be slow. And we want more performance. So in, in the end, if you want to run VSA in Duke Nukem 3D or Redneck Rampage, and I also think in Blood, you do need to have a VSA 2.0 capable card, I just would be wrong or add a VSA BIOS extension. So that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm lo loading UniVB 5.3a. And these cards are very similar. This is the size logic 5428 and this is the 5429. They're basically interchangeable, but this is an ISA card. This is a VLB card. And as far as I understand, from the docs, they're all 16-bit. So just like the ISA bus, we cannot have an 8-bit version. And also this one runs actually 16 bits, though it runs on my motherboard at 40 MHz instead of 8, so it's much faster. So we're gonna try both of these cards, uh, both see how I say perform versus VLB, but also see how, uh, how they perform with the VSO 2.0 extension. So let's get these cards into a motherboard and I'm gonna show you the motherboard and CPU we're gonna use and the RAM. And then we will test these out and uh, hopefully this time I get the... Uh, what we're actually comparing right and not wrong because that's kind of dumb. For the motherboard, because we need something to run out, I'm gonna pick something faster. This is my lab board, so it's not my DX4 100 overdrive as I used in the last video. Uh, this motherboard I got for free a long time ago when I as a spare part board. So it was, it was already a spare part board by the previous owner and uh, he basically gave it to me as part for fixing his board. So once I fixed his board, I could keep this board. That was the deal he said. So the, like the L2 cache was gone and so on. And uh, the reason it didn't actually work as he intended was because the voltage regulator was gone. Uh, so I put one on here from my graphics card and modified the circuit a little bit to, to match that. And that works fine. I put in a uh, cache from another dead board that was uh, a toast. Uh, so it actually has 64k of cache from the beginning to, and uh, it has 256k of L2 cache now. So that's an upgrade. And we got uh, 16 megs of RAM over here. Uh, the BIOS on this board, uh, it works fine. But uh, the CPU I'm using here is a Cyrix uh, GP120. Uh, I got it from a friend, they bought it on eBay for like 10 euros and all the legs were stepped on. Seems like there's been water or something on it, so all the legs were corroded, bent, and all, completely trashed. So I had to file the legs off and solder on new legs from an Athlon basically, and modify the socket to get it all the way down, like more modern late dependency in CPUs, because the legs are shorter. And it didn't want to run the 40 bus, and uh, wasn't properly detected, and it underperformed a lot. And there's software to solder with Cyrix, but uh, in the end I made an adapter, burnt uh, a new ROM uh, from a board that has the same Opti chipset, exactly the same, and the board also had VLB bus support and everything. So I burnt that, tried that, and it works like a charm. I can run 40 bus. Before I couldn't, it would uh, bo uh, post but not boot anything like DOS, so it would just hang. With this is stable, it's detected as the proper CPU and uh, the performance is there. There's no software needed, it just works really well. And the old BIOS chip ended up dying at some point too when I was testing both of them. So, kind of stuck on that one. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, it's great. So this board is puzzled together from like two other boards plus a graphics card. Yeah, and it's recapping everything. But it's my lab board, it's really fast, it performs similar to the, the AMD 486 uh, 
rebranded AM5X86, the 133, uh, performs very similar to that. So, and that also means you're gonna have 40 meter will be bus running here, since this is a 40 bus CPU and will be basically directly connected to the CPU. So that's the motherboard. So we're just gonna add the different cards to this board and test them out. To break down the benchmark, I took some screenshots so we can compare screen buffer mode versus VSA 2.0. We gained about 22% on the ISA and the VLB card compared to itself with the screen buffer mode. We can also see that the VLB card is always faster. So this is pretty much the same as the previous uh, image, so no big uh, change here. Technically the slowest for the ISA card is 60% and uh, the Second lowest for the VLB with 22% gain. And that's probably within margin of error. Uh, here we went down the chute, and uh, here is usually where you see some of the biggest gains. Kind of pointless, but you uh, can really see what thing max out at. So, took a screenshot where I had uh, overall the, the highest frame rate within like a frame or so. I do think this is not 48, it looks like it. On the top right one, uh, the ISA card, I think that's like 40 something because I had a 41 and 39 before and after if I call. So I'm gonna guess that that is closer to 41. So that's a gain around 58% on the ISA card with VSA 2.0. Then we can look at the two bottom pictures and we got a gain of 88% on the VLB card with VSA 2.0. We are running 4.3 times faster with the VLB card and we have 2.0 versus the screen buffer mode on the ISA card. And here we had similar gains as we had in the beginning, slightly higher, 22% on the ISA card and 25% uh, on the VLB card. We can clearly see here that the VLB card running VSA 2.0 is almost twice as fast as the ISA card running screen buffered mode. And this is just to see how high frame rate we can get and yeah, we got a gain of uh, 
around 51% on the ISA card, uh, which is a up and down, and we got a gain of 84% uh, on the VLB card at 116 frames per second versus 63. And if I did the math right, it came out the VLB card on the bottom right with this 2.0 came out three and a half times faster than the ISA card. So in this video, we compared VSA 2.0 in Duke Nukem 3D with the screen buffered mode. And uh, I was initially wrong. I assumed somehow that I was using VSA 1.0, but uh, or 1.1 or 1.2. My card, like this one, so should support 1.2. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, I think the lowest resolution is actually 640 by 480. And you can select that with a 1.2 BIOS, like I have on, uh, say, this card. And uh, the CLB card here. So we weren't actually running that. We were running basically a screen buffer mode, not a VESA mode. So we weren't compared comparing this 1.0 to 2.0. So if you saw my original video, that was wrong. The, the test is still valid. My whole point of the video was that if you don't have this 2.0, but on your graphics card, you can have it on your ROM if you support it. But if you don't, you can load like UniVB. I use 5.3a. And if you load that, you can select the 320 by 200 mode, which is requires this 2.0. You can select the highest 640 by 480 with uh, like 1.2, maybe lower. I haven't tested. I, I know this card should have 1.2 on it. Uh, the size log logic 5428. So the, 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 the test is basically the same. Uh, it's just that I was wrong about what uh, mode I was running in when I didn't run VSA 2.0. The point is that if you load a VSA 2.0 BIOS, you can uh, use the we have a 2.0 320 by 200 resolution, and that is faster than the screen buffer mode in the Gugan 3D. And uh, I tested Red Deck Rampage, and my friend is all into blood, and it's the same engine. Uh, as far as I know, he gets great performance there too, using a VB extension. He has done that back since it was a, was a thing in the 90s, like mid 90s. So yeah, that sums this video up. It's a correction. I will uh, upload this and. Uh, I will leave the other one up as a private video, I think. So if someone has a link, it still works. But uh, if you see this one, uh, this is a correction. The end re result, like I said, uh, is the same performance wise. It's just that you should use the right terminology and not uh, make people think you're running something or not. So that's why I re-edited this video and re-uploaded it. So yeah, that's it for this time. And thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.